and it also performs better uh, it has a better hash rate and stuff uh, how this affects you is it enables people to be more efficient in participating in a pool uh, be it the of in, in either of the pools um, and a lot of people have shared the feedback that you know the official pool does not have the option and they have to choose either of those uh, we love them for what they have done by the way uh, so based on this feedback we are going to soon announce a competition where you can make an open source contribution uh, on developing the functionality for the network for anyone to adapt and enable a gpu mining option for their pool so more details on that to be shared soon uh, on the announcement channel so kindly stay tuned to that uh, and more to that i would add is thanks again uh, zk work and hpool for enabling the option uh, because as you all are aware the ethereum has had a major upgrade they have now moved from proof of work to proof of stake which means they will be using much less uh, gpu miners so in case you uh, had such a setup or you know someone who did uh, we would really appreciate you introducing them to einfish so that they can join the pools uh, the ones that exist and support gpu mining right now and support the development for the official pool uh, so that everyone can start using gpu uh, to connect with einfish thank you And then Lawrence, if you want to mention. I just, sorry. Yeah, I was about to ask uh, if uh, I'll now request Lawrence to take up and no, talk about it. Um, thanks, Aditya. Like, uh, we appreciate everybody's, we, we, we understand that seeing the GPU mining come in for people who had been CPU mining uh, was definitely a challenge. And so uh, we appreciate everybody's patience as we adjust. And also, we thank the miners who have come up with those solutions. That's really incredible. Um, my uh, my update's pretty quick. It's just around our hiring, and it's pretty similar to previous updates. Uh, we are hiring engineers and a marketing person. So uh, uh, for my team, for the engineering team, we are looking for both uh, actually three types of engineers, back-end engineer, front-end engineer, and uh, cryptography engineer, so somebody who would be working with uh, zero-knowledge proofs and this kind of thing. Um, we are, if you know anybody that is, uh, you know, excited about the space and has engineering background and wants to get into working on a L1 uh, um, you know, network, we absolutely would love to talk to them. So uh, you, can, you can apply through our job site and uh, we'll, uh, you know, we respond to every application that comes through. Uh, for marketing, uh, we're looking for people that have uh, ideally a great crypto Twitter presence and are you know, good content creators and you know, good at uh, you know, creating a marketing strategy for a crypto company so um there's there's plenty of those folks out there and we'd love to talk to them if you know any of them as well uh with that being said we're going to do a little bit of a different format at the end here we uh we have our q a channel here in discord uh the mo uh, monthly pulse chat and uh we would actually like to take some questions live so you know the previous monthly pulses we've been just sort of fielding them as they come in we'd like to like leave a few minutes for people just to put in whatever questions they have having heard everybody speak and uh, respond to them live as they come in so if you have a question hit up the monthly monthly pulse channel and we will uh we'll answer now yeah so we have a couple <laughs> questions in here you can raise your hands now sorry about that yeah we um, so yeah, we can, we have a couple questions actually that we can take from the chat that I'd like to repeat because there's been some answers there, um, as well as for the recording itself. But I think the first question asked earlier uh, from Null is, Elena, do you have some thoughts about who will be delisting Monero Zcash and other privacy coins, and how can this affect Ironfish? And I think um, Elena, if you want to take this one. Yeah, so um, I already kind of started to answer this question um, in the chat as well, but I'll, but I'll kind of reiterate. Um, so I think right now what's happening is that we as a crypto community are still digesting the US sanction news around Tornado Cash. And we're still trying to process what that means, not only for privacy projects, but for DeFi projects in general. Um, so this is actually something that I've been seeing uh, as a conversation topic for DeFi projects like DYDX and Compound and Aave, they're having questions around, in light of the sanction news, what is the overhead that is necessary from these projects to minimize criminal activity? 
Um, so honestly, you know, the fact that the U.S. sanctions um, happened the way they did um, has had a pretty uh, big like ripple effect um, on all crypto projects. And I think in terms of the Huobi, uh, if I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly, uh, delisting of privacy coins, I think, um, you know, my kind of assumption is that a lot of other countries follow U.S. regulations. Sometimes, uh, most of the time, U.S. regulations are by far the harshest. Um, and so I think we, you know, the U.S. does influence um, how other countries think about these uh, these other coins. Um, so, you know, we are a U.S. team. U.S. regulators are by far the, in my opinion, the hardest to kind of sway. <laughs> um, so right now our efforts um, are primarily to uh, work with other teams, um, work with other GCs, work with other uh, kind of collaborators in the space. Um, to focus on educating and informing U.S. Re re uh, regulators and policymakers around the benefits of privacy. So, you know, in Craig's uh, introduction, for instance, like Craig could not be a better person for us to join the team. <laughs> um, you know, he kind of mentioned that in his background, he um, actually used to work on the Bank Integrity Unit, uh, both the Bank of America as well as the Department of Justice. So DOJ is Department of Justice. Um, so he is very acutely aware of, you know, how to regulate, how do regulators think, um, and what their priorities are at the end of the day, you know, us regulators are normal people who want to protect consumers and want to protect us citizens. Um, they have really good intentions in mind. Um, so right now, like we are putting in a lot of effort to, again, talk about the benefits of privacy, that privacy is actually good for national security, not the opposite of it. Um, and for what it's worth, I think like our efforts and the efforts of many other projects, in my opinion, are starting to resonate. Um, like he was, uh, you know, uh, Treasury finally gave some guidance around, um, you know, some of the innocent people that have been affected by the sanctions of, of Tornado Cash, which I think is, is a good sign. Um, so again, it's a, it's a pretty complicated problem of, you know, um, regulators around the world, not just the US, are getting nervous about privacy. But realistically, we cannot have a world where crypto is going to be this, you know, universal payment system without privacy that, you know, they, it has to live together. And so um, it's kind of inevitable that we are going to have a privacy solution. We just need to figure out uh, a middle path that is, you know, comfortable for uh, regulators to kind of accept it. Um, in terms of like how it affects Ironfish, you know, we have always been about, you know, like every Ironfish wallet has a view key. View keys can be used to provide audits. Um, we we're doubling down on that message of, you know, we're building Ironfish for good people, normal actors who want to use crypto safely. We're not building this for criminals. Um, and so we are kind of doubling down on that message. Um, one thing that is a bit far off, but, you know, we are building Ironfish to be the privacy layer for all crypto assets. One of the things that we are going to be doing in order to get there is to support bridges. Um, so bridges is one way that we can actually put in controls for who can use Ironfish. Um, and for full transparency, we are going to be working with some of the chain analytic tools to figure out, you know, how do we put more controls on these bridges to minimize criminal activity? Um, and things like this, you know, do, uh, you know, do resonate favorably with policymakers, uh, because again, genuinely do want to protect consumer while making this ecosystem safe. Um, so it's kind of a long-winded answer. Obviously, you know, it's concerning that people are uh, reacting negative, negative to privacy. Um, we are putting a lot of effort into this. Uh, I think privacy is inevitable in shape, you know, shape or form. Um, so I don't know if that's a good answer or not, but it's definitely uh, top of mind for us. Yeah, thank you. Um, next, I've seen this question asked by a bunch of different people, but Arushka asks, um, if Mina is next year, what will happen with the test net? Are there any changes planned? And um, I think I can kind of answer this one. I think we're not planning to change the test net. I think the test net is accomplishing the goal that we want it to accomplish. It's helping to create transactions that are stressing the network. Uh, we want to test like high transaction throughput. So I think our plan is just to kind of continue it right now. Uh, and just a bit of information, even when we launch mainnet, test net will always be a thing. It'll obviously, like all networks have like a test net where they can kind of test consensus upgrades and things. So I don't think that there's any plan to, you know, ever not have a test net. But right now we're not planning to evolve like a test net phase three or any such changes with new uh, challenges, so to speak. 
So I, I think this next question will be for Elena. Um, I've seen a couple people ask about this, but will there be news about the ambassador program? Yeah, so the ambassador program was launched um, a while back. Um, honestly, we're still kind of struggling to figure out how to uh, effectively use the ambassador program. Um, I'm not sure if it was as successful as we initially wanted it to be. Again, I'm saying this out of full transparency. Um, so going forward, you know, we'll make announcements for how to, um, you know, how to deal with the ambassador program going forward. Um, you know, I, oh, yes, <laughs> I mentioned the ambassador program now. So, sorry, it's just the, uh, the comments are coming in. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of announce um, a, way, uh, a way forward for the ambassador program fairly soon. Um, you know, looking at phase one uh, in comparison to the ambassador program, we actually have seen a lot more content comp contribution from phase one than the ambassador program. Um, again, this is just out of full transparency. Um, so I think we have had higher expectations around it. Um, so we'll be kind of closing that out fairly soon. And uh, we'll make sure that everyone is um, rewarded as we promised. Um, and we'll make sure that people are, you know, they feel appropriately, uh, appro uh, appropriately um, kind of compensated for, for their efforts. Um, and I think like for, for us in particular, um, we'll figure out different ways to engage with the community in terms of content, con uh, content contribution. The next question, there's two questions that we're going to merge together. I think this one is also going to be a good one for Elena. Um, it's more a comment about kind of like the Ethereum merge. So two questions are, are we considering, is Ironfish considering moving to proof of stake like Ethereum has? And the second question is, is Ironfish approaching Ethereum miners to mine Ironfish since Ethereum has moved to proof of stake? Yeah, so Ironfish right now is proof of work. Um, I think we've seen at least one person who said they did move away from ETH proof of work to um, to Ironfish, which is pretty cool, honestly. Um, a lot of Iron, uh, sorry, um, a lot of Ethereum miners actually did have GPU mining, um, so I can see that being, you know, applicable here. Um, in the long, long term, like w like why did Ethereum move to proof of stake? Well, they moved to proof of stake because they had years of distribution. And they wanted to make a solution that was friendlier for the environment. Um, if you actually look at proof of stake, they, you know, there there is some additive benefit for block finality, for instance. But the block times are not faster than proof of work, for instance. So the scalability um, aspect is kind of um, sometimes alluded to proof of stake, but it's you know not rightly so. Um, so for Ironfish, you know, in the long, long term future. I can see us making the move to proof of stake for the same reasons that Ethereum did. This is not going to be anytime soon. I think proof of work is actually by far the best thing for Ironfish right now. Um, if you look at some of the other proof of stake projects that have launched, uh, you know, with proof of stake right off the bat, unlike Ethereum, um, you know, it's it's a lot harder to get validators and stakers into your system um, because you need to have this initial problem of distribution. Uh, and for, for Ironfish right now, you can, anyone can, can mine Ironfish. Um, you don't need to buy coins in order to stake them. You can just open up your laptop and do npm install dash g Ironfish and you're good to go. And I think that's actually a very, very powerful thing for Ironfish that anyone in the world with just a computer can participate in the network. Um, so I think for foreseeable, foreseeable future, it'll still be proof of work. Um, we might have some much later plans to move to proof of stake, but It'll be similar to uh, the way Ethereum did, which is after years and years of distribution with proof of work. Um, but yes, we do definitely welcome all the miners um, who want to mine Ironfish, uh, who have previously mined Ethereum. Cool. That's all the questions, I think. Hey, we're good. Thank you, yeah. everybody. Thank you, everybody. It's great, great uh, seeing you all this month, and uh, we'll do this again next month. Yes. Thank you for joining, everyone. Have a great weekend. Everybody, watch awesome. Elena at Mainnet. <laughs> September twenty third. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great weekend. I think that's it.
Bye, everyone.